my driving to the cemetery take a picture of my brother-in-law's headstone just wanted to show you the cemetery though so right here is the, the oldest part of it some very old headstones went through here that section right in there brother-in-law uh, passed away in March. Um, he was in a car accident, but we believe he was either uh, a, the way it happened, we believe he was unconscious when he went off the road. He ran through a field and uh, actually hit a church. Looks like the road curved and he just kept going straight and uh, led him straight to the church. Oh, you know, my wife's brother is just really upset about it. And uh, today is my wife's birthday. And uh, she's having no trouble because he called her every year wished her happy birthday. You know, he called her all the time, but he always called him on her birthday, no matter what he was doing, to wish her happy birthday. Yeah, really affected her when he died. Stop right here for a second. This is her, uh, her grandmother's tombstone. Grandmother uh, passed away from a, a brain tumor in 99. Uh, I was just dating Mandy at the time. And uh, this one here, it's hard to see. Her uh, aunt. She passed away uh, last year. She was also in a car accident. just put up the other day. That's, uh, anybody that's gone through a death in the family knows that if you don't have it on hand, you know, beforehand, it's, it takes a while to get these things. My grandmother passed away. It'd be uh, one year, August the 6th. It was four days away. It took a while to get hers. There's the, the front or back of his headstone. the 
footstone. She's gotten dirty from the the rain. Uh, they they've asked the uh, man to come back and. replace this footstone because he said up here at the head and they're not sure why and I want to show you this tree that one right there now this tree is, is significant to us because during Jonathan's funeral or his burial as I sat next to my wife I looked up this tree and things were just starting to bloom so it wasn't a stick these trees over here and I saw in my mind, not, um, I didn't see it physically, because that would have been really, really creepy, but in my mind, I saw my brother-in-law sitting up against that tree, and he was enjoying the day, and I knew that he was aware of us, what we were doing. But he wasn't looking over here. He wasn't concerned. And I just felt the peace in my heart because he had been into some stuff. He'd been into sin and I had reservations on whether, you know, he was saved when he died. But I believe God confirmed that to me. Now, you, you might think, you know, why, why you, why no one else? Well, a lot of people have got had confirmation. As I was, as I looked over here, there were a, a, a warm gust of wind, not hard, it was a very strong breeze. And my pastor's wife, who was uh, singing at the time, so when she felt that breeze, she felt the peace. And uh, almost everyone in the family has had some sort of uh, confirmation, uh, be it a dream or a vision or, or a word through someone else that uh, Jonathan was saved uh, when he died. My wife had written uh, everybody in the family a letter because uh, she felt God had led her to. And she, she was very worried on whether he had read that letter or not because someone had said that he didn't. He just sent it back. We uh, went through his car after the crash trying to get all his personal stuff out and I, I reached in underneath uh, the crumpled metal and I found that letter it had been opened and then we received word from one of his co-workers that he had for two weeks which is how long he had that letter he had been asking questions uh, constantly about the Bible and God had been reading his Bible and that was just our confirmation that, that he did go to heaven